Welcome back to the Innovation Series. I'm uh, joined here this afternoon by Andrea Cavalleroni, the business developer for Boero. Andrea, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Jack. Well, I think there's, there's not many uh, products like a top coat or, or, or like the end uh, paint job of a vessel that are so important uh, for first impressions and, and, and the vessel itself. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what's been happening with Boero? Yeah, so we are paint manufacturers and uh, we, we strongly believe that uh, the top coat, let's say, is the real first impression that a person gets from a, from a new yacht. And uh, just to give a few figures of uh, who we are, we are a, a paint company that has uh, 10 different brands. So we're active not only in the uh, yachting industry, but also in the architecture and deco. And we manufacture around 20 million liters of uh, paint per year. And we have a history of 190 years on the market. So from 1831. Wow. I mean, I think with something that's as important as the top coat and, and, and like we said, that first impression, um, you need to be continually innovating and, and, and keeping your products as, as up to date and, and dynamic as possible. And I was wondering what, what exactly innovation means to, to you at Boero? Let's say that uh, for us, the, the key uh, to innovation is to be able to understand the market's uh, requests in advance. So uh, we are uh, not only talking about uh, product innovation, which is a uh, of course, uh, a focal point, but in general, understand where the market will evolve. And so, of course, we, we, we believe deeply in the importance of research and development, which is a, a good part of our investments. And uh, for instance, uh, a big question for us as paint suppliers uh, can be if in the future there will be the need for more local centers in which uh, our paints will be manufactured instead of have, let's say, one main uh, manufacturing plant. And uh, another topic that for us it's, is really emerging uh, concerning innovation is uh, environmental sustainability. Because uh, we can see that uh, there is a very strong drive towards uh, uh, greener products as uh, requested by, by the customers. And therefore, of course, the, the final aim would be to arrive at uh, zero emissions. And uh, so this is the direction that, uh, that uh, we are going uh, towards. So for instance, this, uh, this year we are launching a, a water-based uh, anti-fouling and primer, so a paint system for below the water line. Mm -hmm. And we are working towards uh, biocide-free anti-fouling and uh, circular economy. So to be able to have, let's say, waste products from other uh, industries that can become instead uh, raw materials for, for our paints. Okay, that, that's interesting. So you, you've spoken there both about innovations from your side and also perhaps innovations that are driven by, by the demands of the customer. Are you finding a balance between those two? Uh, yeah, because uh, we believe that both the clients and the suppliers can be the, drives, the drivers for change. And so it always depends on, on the customer's emerging needs and the supplier's capacity to understand them and uh, uh, lead the way towards, let's say, uh, new products and services. Sure. I, I mean... This is quite a general question, but I'm sure you've encountered some, some challenges over the last 12 months. And, and, and what, is you, what have you seen as the biggest strengths that have been highlighted uh, at Boero over, the, over this past you know, 12 months, 18 month period? Yeah, of course, let's say 2020 was a really difficult year. And for us, let's say our main strength was to be able to serve our customers closely in the sense that we continue to maintain the same, let's say, uh, uh, deliveries of products and uh, assistance and services. And uh, so therefore, the, the main point was that uh, our company never stopped or closed and we did not have any delays or missing pro products. So we kind of took the chance 
for uh, the, the moments in, in March and April where, where Italy was practically uh, completely shut down to, to make uh, focus groups within our company to understand which were uh, the key points that we wanted to improve. With the, with the drives for innovation that we highlighted, are there any specific products that, 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 that you have developed uh, with those in mind? And, and could you give us some examples? Yeah, well, one example of, uh, let's say, a key product that we recently launched is uh, our latest uh, top coat, which is called the Challenger Pro. And it is a polyacrylic top coat and therefore it is polishable. So this helps in the, let's say, long-term maintenance. And uh, one of the key innovations is that it's avail available in 200,000 different colors with any kind of effect. So from pastel to uh, metal, metallic effects and pearlescent effects. So any kind of, uh, of effect can be possible in uh, thousands of different colors. And you can polish out some of the imperfections or the scratches that will eventually happen exactly. after the life cycle of a paint job. Exactly, yes. That's really interesting. Uh, I think also it's, it's inevitable that the last 12 months have highlighted some weaknesses across the industry. Is there something you think that we collectively can improve upon? Well, I, I think one thing that, uh, that, let's say, affected us very much as an industry is uh, that uh, it is an industry very much based on, let's say, face-to-face -face relationships. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we were not able to, to meet face-to-face -face and, uh, and to have, let's say, our usual uh, bigger, let's say, boat shows, uh, such as, uh, for example, the Monaco Boat Show or, for instance, the Mets in Amsterdam, uh, that kind of uh, might have affected uh, the the industry as a whole and the relationship between the potential buyers mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and the shipyards. So I think this will take time to kind of adapt to this new normal. Of course, there there have been uh, innovations on that side on digitalization on on uh, let's say brokers having uh, 3D models of the yachts being able to show them to, to the potential buyers. And uh, there have been, let's say, virtual boat shows as well. But um, I think there, there still needs to be, let's say, uh, going back to normal to having live events. I, I, I couldn't agree more there. And it will be interesting to see uh, how we readjust. Lastly, and not quite so seriously, I want to get your opinion on who's going to win the America's Cup in the next couple of months. Well, of course, as, uh, as an Italian, I, I am rooting for Luna Rossa. So we are kind of the, the underdog here, but uh -huh. uh, let's see if we, can, if we can surprise everybody and win the America's Cup. Well, as a New Zealander, of course, I think you're wrong, but I, uh, I, hope, that, uh, I hope that we have a great race anyway. Well, uh, Andrea, thank you so much for being with us. I, I really appreciate your time on the innovation series and uh, hopefully thank we'll you. see you around soon. Thank you for having me.